It's just mesmerizing seeing this many calvers in the one tank. However, it's far more easier to maintain a large body of water because the water parameters stay stable. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my December 2022 fish room tour. So let's get straight into it. So the first tank getting an update this month is my white Alto Limpologus Calvus Fry Grow Out Aquarium. This is a five foot long aquarium and I doubt that there are many aquariums in the world that have this many calvus in the one tank. Uh, these guys are getting sold off shortly uh, and if you are interested in buying them, head over to allfishtoyou.com and you'll be able to purchase my cichlids in the Lake Tanganyikan section of that fish store. So these guys, there are actually two or three spawns in this aquarium. They all grow at different rates and the smaller ones are likely to be the females, the larger fish in this aquarium likely to be the males, but that's no guarantee in sexing Alto Lampologus calvus. Now, like I said, these guys are the white variety. I also do breed in this fish room the black variety as well, if you didn't know. And I've also got an in-depth species profile on how to breed these guys. So if you're into Alto Lampologus calvus or Alto Lampologus compressorceps, I highly recommend you give this video here a watch because I go into real good detail about how to breed these guys and how to look after their fry. All the trial and error that I went through in raising the fry, because the fry are kind of on the more delicate side for cichlids. I go through my experience with that and what I did to correct the issue. Now these guys here, you might be surprised to know how old they are. They are approaching the one and a half to two year mark. Alto Lamprologus calvus and Alto Lamprologus compressorceps are very slow growing cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. So you gotta have a lot of patience with them, but uh, it's really worth the effort. As you can see here, this tank looks amazing and it's not even properly aquascaped. Now, the reason for it not being properly aquascaped as I've said in my past videos, that's because this is a fry grow out aquarium and I'm regularly going into this aquarium and catching out calvus to sell to customers. So I have to quickly grab all the rocks out for ease of catching the fry and bag them up. So tomorrow when I catch the fry out of this aquarium, I'm gonna take all the rocks out, catch the fry for the shop, allfishtoyou.com and uh, take them down to the shop. So I'll have to take all the rocks out and that's why I don't really bother aquascaping this tank. Now, in saying that, these guys are cave rock dwellers. They are substrate spawners. They like a bit of shelter in the aquarium and that's why I put the rocks in there. I don't like to leave them without any uh, shelter for too long a periods of time. Uh, and that's because they feel more comfortable. They feel more at ease with uh, some rocks in the aquarium rather than just bare bottom with nothing in it and just basically in the open water. That's not how they are in the wild. They like to inhabit the uh, rocky crevices of the lake and live in caves and rocks, so they need, they need a bit of shelter. Also, these guys, every single time I've spawned my White Alto Lampologus Calvus breeding pair, they've spawned in a shell. Now you can see there's no shells in this aquarium, uh, and that's purely, again, for ease of catching these fish. So for ease and maintenance of this aquarium, it's bare bottom, and the rocks are easy to get out. Uh, I would like to aquascape one of these tanks one day just to do a nice proper aquascape and make an interesting video as well. And just to see how this, this aquarium would look with so many calvus in the one tank with a beautifully aquascaped aquarium. But uh, that's a video for another day and a project for another day as well. But yeah, I really love watching this aquarium. It's just mesmerizing seeing this many calvus in the one tank. Now I don't really recommend you guys do that. Don't aim to do this uh, as a long-term thing. These guys, I move them on fairly quickly and that's why I'm able to keep them in a five foot grey out aquarium. Uh, I, I don't intend to keep them to adulthood in a tank this size. Uh, that isn't recommended. Also, if you're not aware, I run a sump system. So these guys are on a sump system uh, that holds over 3,000 litres of water. So that, it's just not its just not an individual aquarium, a uh, five foot aquarium. There is water coming from all the other tanks in the fish room into this aquarium and then getting filtered through a large sump. Hence why I'm able to get away with this kind of thing uh, fairly easy uh, without having to do so many water changes. But yeah, the guys are doing fantastic and I just love this tank. And <laughs> Obviously sad to sell some because, again, the tank looks amazing with this many calvers in it. But anyway, on to the next tank. And this is the tank directly below the White Outer Lampologus Calvus Fry Grow Out Aquarium. And these guys in this tank are Neolamprologus Leilupi and Gelidochromus Regani. 
also have bristlenose catfish in both the aquariums just to help me keep the algae at bay. Uh, but yeah, this is another grow out tank that I have in the fish room, one of the larger tanks that I have, and it's growing out the Leilupi and the Gilodochromus regani. This regani is the Zambia gold variety. Now, the Leilupi are starting to get to a size where I might be able to sell them. There are, for me, to me, on the smaller side, I've never sold Leilupi at this size. They are of the smaller size, so I'm gonna grow them out a little bit uh, longer. However, the Regani are also going to all fish to you, and uh, they should have them stocked by the time you guys see this video. So if you're interested in buying my cichlids, again, head over to that website, one of the most reputable online fish stores in Australia. But again, another tank that I love looking at, again, I wouldn't recommend you keep this many Tanganyikan cichlids in the one aquarium. These cichlids aren't in these aquariums for too long. I grow them up, I sell them to the wholesaler or to local fish stores. So uh, they're just purely in here for a grow out. And again, they're on a sump system so I can get away with it a little bit easier because of the huge volume of water. Larger volumes of water are easier to maintain. It might not, that might be a surprise to some of you guys watching this video. You might want to start off with a smaller tank and that's fair enough. It's cheaper to run a smaller tank. However, it's far more easier to maintain a large body of water because the water parameters stay stable. You don't get temperature fluctuations very quickly in a larger volume of water than, you know, say a 30 litre aquarium the temperature could change faster in, the, in, in a tank that size than it can in 3,000 litres of water. And also chemistry swings. So uh, water parameter swings don't fluctuate that quickly in a larger body of, of water. But in a smaller body of water, it is much easier to get fluctuations in your water chemistry, in your water parameters. So for that reason, I am able to kind of get away with it. Again, not for a long period of time. I don't want to stock this many fish in, that, in an aquarium this size, even though this tank is five foot long, I don't like to stock them for too long with this many cichlids and they get moved on. But again, another beautiful tank that I really like to watch and another one I'd like to aquascape one day to see how it looks. You know, it'll probably make an interesting video as well. It's bare bottom purely for ease of maintenance for keeping the tank clean. I prefer a uh, substrate on the, on the bottom of the tank, but it's a lot easier to clean a bare bottom aquarium, unfortunately. I don't think it looks as good as a nice substrate. The thing with Leilupi, you want to keep them in a bright aquarium so they can keep their bright yellow coloration. And the benefit of having them in a bare bottom tank like this, the styrofoam is white, so it reflects the light back up that is coming from the LED unit on the aquarium. So a nice bright substrate for them will, will be fine as well. Uh, however, because the styrofoam is white, it doubles as cushioning the aquarium and keeping those Leilupi nice and bright for me. And this is my Lamprologus Ocellatus Gold Aquarium. Now I showed this aquarium in last month's video, which you could watch right here. And in that video, you would have seen that there were six Lamprologus Ocellatus Gold, or Ockies for short, which is their common name. However, this month, there's only four in this aquarium. And the reason for that is, I've been moving out the fish that have been getting picked on, slowly working out which are the pair, which are the breeding trio, potentially. And at the moment, I've got four fish in this aquarium. I believe I've got three females and one male. And uh, there is one female on the right-hand side of the tank at the front here, uh, just here, this one. Uh, she seems to be get, getting picked on the most out of the remaining fish in, in this aquarium. And I will probably move her out. Uh, the male may accept her eventually, uh, but he hasn't really yet. With my original breeding trio of Lamprologus Ocellatus Gold, the male only accepted one female for a few months and then eventually accepted the second and would spawn with both females in the one aquarium. So I'm trying to replicate that here. And really, I'm hoping to do it with three females and one male. Uh, and that's why I've left this other female in the aquarium, hoping that he does accept her as well and spawns with all three females in the aquarium. Pretty lucky boy. Anyway, now with this aquarium, you can see there's a large rock in the middle, running through the middle of the aquarium and that is to break the line of sight between the females. The females will fight, uh, however the male will break up the fights. Now when they're courting the male, the females will get a dark horizontal bar down the length of their body from their gill plate to their tail and that's a sign of courtship with the male. Now two of the females, the one at the back and the one at the front over here, have been accepted by the male and I've got great news, they have spawned. There were fry in this aquarium, however, at the time when I noticed the fry, there were also the other gold Ockies. And unfortunately, they got picked off by the other Ockies that weren't spawning. So here in the video, you can see the fry near the female shell. 
and I was trying to work out which fish weren't part of the spawning harem. So having to catch them out one by one and then only leave the fish in the aquarium that are spawning. So unfortunately those fry did get eaten by the other gold ockies while I was trying to work out who, who are the parents. Uh, it's, it's, it is hard to tell and I actually took out three of the gold ockies and left three in this aquarium. I mistakenly took out the male and left three females in here. My mistake, error I made, I'll have to wear that, but now I've introduced the male back into this tank, as you can see here, and Harmony has once again been restored in this tank. Without that male in there, you can see the females would go up to each other and they would fight. Over the male in this aquarium, he is already starting to break up the fights between the two females. Uh, when I took that male out, both females were fighting and they would fight non-stop, and the female that didn't have fry obviously picked off the fry that were in the aquarium. So my aim is, once all the females in this aquarium are spawning, they won't eat the other ones fry because all the fry end up getting mixed up. Their maternal instinct kicks in and they don't eat any of the fry in the aquarium. So that's fantastic. I'm hoping for that to happen soon and I believe it will happen in the next month once these guys spawn one more time. The next spawn that these guys have in this tank, I will have fry in here and uh, I'm really glad about that. It didn't take too long, about two months that they've been in this aquarium. Again, I've got to work out with the female at the very front of the tank right here if I'm going to keep her in this aquarium uh, or move her out. But as you can see, the male is caught in with two females in this tank. So I once again, thankfully, have a breeding trio. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're spawned already. Uh, he's only been back in this tank about a week. And uh, yeah, you can see how she's trying to get him to go to her shell. Great to see. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to getting fry in this aquarium once again and breeding gold ockies in my fish room. Really love these fish. Now, if you enjoyed that video, you'll definitely like this one where I go through the entire fish room with all the fish in every single aquarium. Or if you want to see how the fish rooms run, why don't you watch this video here where I discuss how to run a sump system. Anyway, guys, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.